Passion of Our Lord Jesus Christ, according to Matthew. Jesus was brought before Pontius Pilate, the governor, and the governor put to him this question, Are you the king of the Jews? Jesus replied, It is you who say it. But when he was accused by the chief priests and the elders, he refused to answer at all. Pilate then said to him, Do you not hear how many charges they have brought against you? But to the governor's surprise and amazement, he offered no reply to any of the charges. At festival time, it was the governor's practice to release a prisoner for the people, anyone they chose. Now there was at that time a notorious prisoner whose name was Barabbas. So when the crowd gathered, Pilate said to them, Which do you want me to release for you, Barabbas or Jesus, who is called Christ? For Pilate knew it was out of jealousy that they handed him over. Now as he was seated in the chair of judgment, his wife sent him a message. Have nothing to do with this man. I have been upset all day by a dream I had about him. The chief priests and the elders, however, had persuaded the crowd to demand the release of Barabbas and the execution of Jesus. So when the governor spoke and asked him, which of the two do you want me to release for you? They said, Barabbas. Pilate said to them, But in that case, what am I to do with Jesus who is called Christ? They all said, Let him be crucified. Pilate asked, Why? What harm has he done? But they shouted all the louder, Let him be crucified. Then Pilate saw that he was making no impression that in fact a riot was imminent. So he took some water, washed his hands in front of the crowd and said, I am innocent of this man's blood. It is your concern. And the people to a man shouted back, His blood be on us and on our children. Then he released Barabbas for them. He ordered Jesus be first scourged and then handed over to be crucified. The governor's soldiers took Jesus with them into the praetorium and they collected the whole cohort round him. Then they stripped him and made him wear a scarlet cloak and having twisted some thorns into a crown they put it on his head and placed a reed in his right hand. To make fun of him they knelt to him saying Hail King of the Jews! And they spat on him and took the reed and struck him on the head with it. And when they had finished making fun of him, they took off the cloak and dressed him in his own clothes and led him away to crucify him. On their way out, they came across a man from Cyrene, Simon by name, and enlisted him to carry his cross. When they had reached a place called Golgotha, that is the place of the skull, they gave him wine to drink mixed with gall, which he tasted but refused to drink. And when they had finished crucifying him, they shared out his clothing by casting lots, and then sat down and stayed there, keeping guard over him. Above his head was placed the charge against him. It read, This is Jesus, the King of the Jews. At the same time, two robbers were crucified with him, one on the right and the other on the left. The passers-by jeered at him. They shook their heads and said, So you would destroy the temple and build it in three days? Then save yourself if you are God's son. Come down from the cross. The chief priests with the scribes and elders mocked him in the same way, saying, He saved others. Himself he cannot save. He is the king of Israel. Let him come down from the cross now and we will believe in him. He puts his trust in God. Now let God rescue him if he wants him. For he did say, I am the Son of God. Even the robbers who were crucified with him taunted him in the same way. From the sixth hour there was darkness over the whole land until the ninth hour. And about the ninth hour Jesus cried out in a loud voice, Eli, Eli, lama sabachthani, that is, my God, my God, why have you deserted me? 
When some of those who stood by heard this, they said, The man is calling on Elijah. And one of them quickly ran to get a sponge, which he dipped in vinegar, and putting it on a reed, gave it to him to drink. The rest of them said, Wait! See if Elijah will come to save him. But Jesus again, crying out in a loud voice, yielded up his spirit. At that, the veil of the temple was torn in two from top to bottom. The earth quaked, the rocks were split, the tombs opened, and the bodies of many holy men rose from the dead. And these, after his resurrection, came out of the tombs, entered the holy city, and appeared to a number of people. Meanwhile, the centurion, together with others guarding Jesus, had seen the earthquake and all that was taking place, And they were terrified and said, In truth, this was a son of God. Thank you for joining me today on this special occasion. Now today we begin Holy Week. In ancient times this was known as the Great Week. The passion narratives come to life as if enacted before our very eyes. Step by step we follow the path Christ trod during the last days of his mortal life. Like the people of Jerusalem, we too joyfully acclaim Christ as our king. He enters the holy city not as a warrior king with a great army, but as a humble and gentle messiah, humble and riding on a donkey. The donkey was regarded as a beast of burden. Christ, as it were, does the donkey work for us. He takes upon himself the burden and guilt of our sins and carries them in his sacred passion. I think it is also worth noting that in ancient times it was customary for a king to ride on a donkey when on a mission of peace, whereas the horse carried the kings into battle. In this sense... Christ, the King, will bring peace to those who make a place for him in their hearts and follow him with humility. But peace will only be ours if, as subjects of his kingdom, we live by the truth. Jesus said to Pilate, All who are on the side of truth, listen to my voice. Now, under ordinary circumstances, we would have begun this Sunday celebration with a palm procession, but these are not ordinary times. But this procession of palms is not just pageantry, because we must follow Christ with a lively devotion. Even today, the triumph of Easter is foreshadowed, the palm being an emblem of that victory, an emblem of that victory. The Apocalypse relates that the saints in heaven hold palm branches in their hands. So we don't just look back at a past event. The opening prayer of the Mass says it all. When our life on earth is over, may we follow Christ into the new and everlasting Jerusalem of heaven. The first reading from the book of Isaiah, written about 800 years before Christ, speaks about a mysterious suffering servant whose sufferings prefigure those of Christ. The humility of Christ in accepting insult and derision is underscored in the first and the second readings. It says, He did not cover his face against insult and spittle. He emptied himself to assume the condition of a slave, 
The Gospel this year is the story of the Passion from Matthew. It never fails to make a deep impression. As we enter into the story, we can imagine ourselves on Mount Calvary, witnessing Christ's terrible suffering and death for us. The question is, the question we could all ask is, if I were on Calvary that day, what effect might it have on me? What would my reaction be to what was taking place that first Good Friday? The answer is pretty straightforward. Where do I stand now? If I am stuck in the rut of sin and I'm not doing anything about it, then I will certainly keep my distance from the cross of Jesus. It says that many people among the onlookers went home beating their breasts. Do I believe that my sins had a part to play in putting Jesus on the cross? Would I beat my breast and descend from the mountain a rather chastened man or woman? Does the message of Calvary find a real home in my heart? Or am I like most of the crowd that day, just there for the spectacle, but unmoved in any deep down sense? Or does the death of Christ, out of love for humanity, give meaning to my life on earth and prepare me for paradise, which is the real goal of my existence? These are indeed interesting questions for all of us to meditate on. God bless you all. Oh.